Hey guys, I want to do a video on how to modify a cheap pan and tilt camera to have a long range viewing capability. The lenses that are on the camera when they ship give you a wide view so you can use them in like a room situation, but if you want to look at something far away, you're going to want to add a better lens to it. So these cameras are available on banggood.com and they're on sale every now and then for like $12.99 and they're actually quite capable little cameras. So um, this is what it's going to end up looking like when it's modified. I have a 22 millimeter lens on there and I'll go through the process of how to modify that in the video and I'll make some links below for uh, the cameras and for the actual lens. So I'll get started. Okay, so I'm going to uh, modify this camera with a 22 millimeter lens I got off of Amazon. I'll leave a link for it below. But this is what the lens looks like. And this is a little cheap pan and tilt camera from banggood.com. Um, they go on sale every now and then for like $12.99. And it's a pretty decent uh, deal. This is a 12 millimeter by 0.5 thread pitch, which is an S-mount type um, lens. But anyways, uh, let's get to modifying this camera. So the first thing is there's this little beauty ring you can twist off on the lens itself. So you just twist it and it'll twist off and that pops right off. And the next thing you want to do is there's an infrared filter around the infrared light output on the front of the camera here. You can pull that off with a flat blade uh, screwdriver. And then right at the base of the lens, there's a little strip of epoxy. And if you carefully scrape it, you can just break the epoxy off and then twist the, l the lens a little harder and it'll start twisting off. And then you don't want any of the epoxy to fall down into the camera sensor so just tilt the camera head down. And there's the factory lens. And you'll notice in the factory lens there's no infrared filter because this camera is night vision capable with the infrared lighting. So they want to be able to pass infrared to the sensor. Uh, there's a filter assembly inside of the camera here. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a little filter that moves back and forth that uh, solenoid activates. So when the night vision's on, that filter's out of the way and in the daytime they put the filter in the path. So here's the new lens, the 22 millimeter lens. Let's see if that guy will screw in there. And you don't want this to cross thread so you gotta be careful and it should feel pretty smooth when it goes in. So I cross-threaded it. Let's try that again. I'm just having a hard time getting this guy started. So what we're going to have to do now is actually set the focus length of this lens and we're going to have to hook it up and look at the camera live while we're twisting this lens now that it's in there. We're not going to be using the infrared at night because this is going to be focusing a long ways away from where the infrared would actually work. So let me go ahead and get this guy hooked up and we'll focus the lens. 
Okay, so I want to get this camera hooked up so I can look at the camera uh, live on the app while I'm trying to adjust the lens. I'm going to hook it up to a little battery bank here and it should go through a little power routine. I have the YCC365 Plus app already installed on my phone. So I'm going to start that up and it'll log in. So there's the camera initializing itself. It takes probably about 30-40 seconds for it to get to the point where it says to configure it. Give it a few seconds here. Please configure camera by AP hotspot for scanning code. So that's the camera telling us it's ready. And then in the upper right hand corner there's a little circle with a plus in it. We're going to hit that. And then we're going to, out of the list, we're going to pick smart camera. And then we're going to use the addition of AP Hotspot. The reason we're not going to use the scanning code is because this lens isn't in focus and it's also set up for long range now. So, it says add the device and wait for it not to flicker. Hear the tone. We already know it's rebooted, so let's go ahead and hit next. And then what we have to do now is connect to the network on, on, in the inside of the camera. So we go to the setting change the Wi-Fi connection of our phone to the camera and it'll show up in this list in a second. There it is. So it's cloud cam underscore and then a bunch of numbers and digits. Those will always be different depending on what camera it is. So let's go ahead and connect to that. And it says connected no internet and then I have a security and privacy pop-up for my phone. I'm going to say connect anyways. And then now it's connected, no internet. Let's go back. And then you can see that the um, Wi-Fi has no internet access. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and hit next. And what it's going to do is it's connecting to the camera itself right now. And the camera is going and reading what uh, Wi-Fi connections it has. And my network doesn't have a password right now. So I can actually do this without typing in a password. So we're going to connect to Rex, and since I don't have a password, I have to hit a space to get it to work. So I hit the space bar, and I'm going to confirm it. And now you can hear the camera initializing. Please wait for Wi-Fi connecting. Please wait for internet connecting. This will probably take about a minute. Internet connected. Welcome to use cloud camera. So now you know that the camera is working because this has gone into a fast uh, rate. And now you can name the camera. We'll just name it Office for now. And it'll show up in the list of cameras. And it will show up on the bottom here. And you can see, and we're going to flip it to wide view here, that the lens is way out of focus. So let me move the camera using the app. Oh, there's a picture right over, right over there we want to focus on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to twist the lens. And there's a little delay in here, so got to do it slowly. Oh, it looks like I need to go the other direction. So I'm going to go past where I think it's in focus, and then come back. I 
I'm going to switch the camera to a high def um, view because right now it's on SD quality. And there it is. Alright, so I'm outside on the garage roof and I have both cameras set up out here. And I'm just looking at a location with my actual uh, filming camera that I want to look at with the new lens. And it'll be up way up in here. So right now I am looking at it with my filming camera and I'm about, uh, about a nine times image. So let's go inside and look at the uh, two cameras I put inside. So to hopefully see this better, I have the app installed on my Fire 10 inch here. And it's the YCC 365 Plus app. I'm going to start that up. It's going to log in. And we'll go to the cameras that I just set up. So as you can see right away, we have both views from both cameras. And let's put this in HD. And we'll flip it around so we can see it. And this is the original factory lens, as you can see. And we can move the image around if we want to. And then we'll switch to the other camera, which has the 22 millimeter lens on it. And this one's already in HD, so we'll flip it to a large image. And you can see, well, it's a little bouncy out there. But, we can move it around. And we have a nice long range view from the same uh, location with two of these little pan and tilt cameras. Anyways, I hope this video was uh, helpful if you want to modify one of these cameras to have a little bit longer range capability. Um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.